Hey Shay, welcome to your official tutorial for the hot tub. So um, I'm just going to show you a few things. So this is the cover. Uh, if you come a little closer, Paul. It looks like I need to screw this down. I don't have screws, so I'll do that next time. But um, basically, when you're lifting it up, it just folds in half. Obviously, you don't ever want to put weight in the middle of it. You can't really step or stand on it, not that you ever would. Um, so here is your control panel. You've got four buttons and your air control, which we'll come back to in just a second. Over here you have uh, the actual filter, uh, which I'll show you how that works in just a second as well. And then over here is the actual power source. So inside of this box is just a normal plug. It's just covered for the elements for safety. This is the actual on-off switch. So it says reset and test. So to turn it on, you actually hit reset. And you'll see the red light come on, and then you'll hear a click inside the motor. And what will happen is, uh, let's go back to the control panel, is it'll say PR on here, uh, which usually means that it's priming. It might not say it right now because uh, I've had it running all night long trying to heat up. Okay, there it is, priming. So it should do that for about five minutes. So you just leave it alone. Now down here you've got the cabinet. So I'm going to leave these keys for you, probably, um, I'm not sure yet. I'll call you and let you know where we leave these. But down here you've got your lock. So the, uh, the ridges of the key go towards the door of the cabin, and you turn it down. Okay, careful not to drop it down the crack. Uh, the only way to get it at that point would be to unscrew the deck. So I'll put it in my pocket so I don't do that. And you're just going to lift out the bottom gently, and it slides down. And you'll see here, you've got these two uh, pieces of wood. That's what locks them in place. When you're putting it back, you just put it behind this piece of wood of trim, and you lift up on it from the bottom. It's a little bit difficult to get the hang of it. And it should just push in place like that, and then relock the cabinet. Okay, down here, this is the actual uh, pump system. So you won't have to mess with anything other than one thing in here, and that's when uh, every month or so we need to drain it. So Paul, if you can look down in here, it's as simple as this tan and black knob, and all you would do is just hook a hose up to it and open it uh, so that the black is going up in the air, and you just have it drain down the mountain. Uh, eventually, what I'll do is I'll hook up a permanent hose that runs uh, underneath the decking, and that way you won't have to hook up a hose to it at all. You'll just you'll just come in here, drain the tub, and then turn it back. Uh, you shouldn't have to mess with anything else in the tub under here. Uh, the only time I think that we would do that is if there's an issue where I need to call professional help. So um, that should be all that you have to worry about underneath the cabinet. Now obviously if you come here and the water looks really bad or um, foreign substances that are in the water, I'll get that later, uh, then you'll want to drain it as well. Okay, so this is the actual filter and it says here contents under pressure, turn off pump. So what you want to do is make sure that the jacuzzi is off. So I'm going to come back here to the power source. And the black button that says test, you push it, you'll see the light go off, you'll hear a click inside the jacuzzi, and if you go back to the control panel, it shouldn't show anything. And that's how you know the power's off. Okay. So now that the power's off, what you'll do is unscrew this little bulb. This lets the air out. So if it was under pressure, uh, had been running, it would go tss. As soon as you hear the air stop hissing, you pull up on this tab, so it doesn't move up much. See that just rises up a little bit. You can stick your finger in there, and you just twist counterclockwise. And it unscrews, okay? And then this thing, same thing, just turn. Now this isn't actually a twisting lock, uh, it's just a rubber seal so you can actually just push it down 
and pull it up, but I find that it comes off a little easier if you twist and pull at the same time. The only thing in here is the filter. Every once in a while, we might need to hose this down, as you can see the first time running it. Um, there's some debris and stuff in there. Uh, every once in a while, we'll have to replace it completely. Um, but you should be able, that, I say once a month when you are refilling it, probably just take this out and squirt it down with the nozzle. There's really not too much harm you can do to it. And then you just put it back in. I don't think, it doesn't say that there's a top or bottom, so it's really, I don't think any way that you can do this wrong. I probably just would go by the rule of thumb of keeping the letters on top and just drop it in. Okay. And what you can do at this point when the tub is completely empty is you can start by putting the hose right down in the middle of that. I don't know if you can show this, Paul, but right down the middle you just put it in there and you can start filling the tub and what will happen is uh, you'll start seeing water shooting out of the jets when it's empty and that's just the hose making its way through all the system and it'll start filling up um, what I noticed is when I filled it up that way it did pretty good for the first bit and then the hose pressure comes out so fast that it actually couldn't get it out of the jets fast enough so um, it started overflowing not a big deal, I just pulled the hose out, the water level reset, and then I just put the hose back into the tub uh, to have it finish filling the rest of the way. All right, so to put this back on, you're just going to uh, push it down, and then you're gonna retighten this knob so that it's airtight, and then you're just gonna start rescrewing this on again. And that should click back down. So that latch keeps it from being able to screw or unscrew. And again, to open it, just pull up and unscrew. Okay, now let's take a look back at the, uh, the control panel. Actually, I'm going to um, let that prime for a minute. So if you want, let's go back up to the, uh, the hose area. So this isn't rocket science, but I'm sure you knew where the hose was, but I just want to make sure. So that's the only hose. At some point, my plan is to run um, another hose for the fire pit and probably one for the hot tub as well so that uh, we won't have to drag around this big hose everywhere. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it on because I want to overfill the tub just a little bit for evaporation while we're doing You displace that water um, so I fill it right up to the screw hole if you can see that on the top there so right about where it is now is where I would leave it okay. now let's take a look at the controls so you've got four buttons and you have an air so let's start with the jets so to start the jets you push them one time and you can see there uh, they kicked on you can hear it kick on now you can also start the blower. Now the blower is what gives it the air bubble effect. You know what, I think it's not doing it because it's still in priming mode. So it might have to wait till... Oh, that's why. Never mind. So you see here it says uh, air on or off. When you turn it clock Nope, counterclockwise, that's what gives it the bubble effect. When you turn it to the right, it'll turn off the bubbles. Okay, but it won't do that if the blower's not on. All right, and then you have your light. Hard to see uh, in the daytime, but there's just a blue light right there when you first come on. It's just one press on or off. And then the temperature. So I'm probably going to leave it around 98 or 100. I'm going to look online what's the optimal to leave it at in between guests. Um, obviously the 
for every degree higher that you leave it running all the time, the more energy it takes and the higher the power bill will be. So uh, to go up or down, it's funny, it's only one button. So you have to go all the way through, 104 being the highest, go all the way down, keep pressing it, pressing it, all the way down to, not sure what it goes all the way down to, all the way down to 80. So if you want to go back up, you have to start pressing it again. So it just has to cycle all the way through. I'm going to probably leave it at 98 for now, Shay. Um, I'm going to turn the light back off. So you want to just turn the, uh, the air off, keep the jets and the blower off. Because uh, if it's the jets and the blower are going uh, while, while it's heating, uh, it will take longer to heat because of the, um, the bubbles will make the air water cool faster. So, all right, so that's going to be video number one. Video number two will focus on the chemicals, uh, which I'm still learning, so we'll learn this together. But I really appreciate all your help, and I hope that you and Uncle Chris come over here and enjoy this some too. All right, Paul. I accidentally overfilled it, which isn't good because uh, it's not good to be overfilled. Not as bad as being underfilled, though. Uh, so I just screwed it on, went over the tab, and then uh, that's to close it, and then to the right would be to open it. You can hear the water running. Now, one thing that you want to make sure to do is put the end of the hose down the mountain, uh, just so gravity assists in sucking the water out. Because if that end's not higher than uh, or lower than this end, then it won't come out at all. Okay, so we're going to talk about the chemicals. So you have here your bromine filter. So I'm just going to unscrew this. This is where the tablet tablets go. Okay, so you just keep unscrewing forever until it finally comes out. Okay, and you can see down in there there's two tablets. We're going to have to I'm do some research myself on exactly how to get this thing very well balanced, but I can't, I'm kicking myself, I can't find the, uh, the test strips, I think I left them in Tampa. So I'm going to mail you some, but basically they come in a little tube, uh, they're just a little piece of plastic with three sponges on it, and when you just take it and just dump it down in the water about six inches. And the three different colors will tell you the pH level, the bromine level, and one other, maybe the uh, alkaline level. And that will let you know whether or not to add chemicals based on what it's reading. So it's really not that um, difficult once you get the hang of it. But I'm just going to screw this in, let that float around. I'm going to keep the chemicals inside. If you find a better spot for me, you can follow me. These are the, pretty much the three chemicals that we'll be dealing with. So the first one is the bromine tabs. What you do is you just squeeze in and twist. And you can see those tabs that I just put in that floater. There's uh, instructions on these as well. Uh, but I'm going to try and get a little bit more educated on exactly. Then you have uh, what's called the spa up. This is your pH and alkalinity. Um, so based on what that strip tells you, it'll let you know how much to add. And then you have your shock oxidizer. So if the water starts to get cloudy, this is what will uh, clean it and clear it up. Okay. And probably what I'm gonna do is pour all of these um, at my best guess before we leave. Uh, but these are just powders. Okay, and you'll just all the instructions and spread them around. So I'm going to get more more details on these for you, but at least when you have familiarity and know where I was keeping them, Paul and I are going to probably load up a lot of the stuff in the basement um, and take it to the dump and LJ on our way out. So if you see it's barren in here, uh, nobody came and stole the junk. We, uh, we got rid of it. But otherwise, I think that's it for now. I really appreciate uh, you watching the tutorial videos. Hopefully these will be helpful enough. I'm sorry it wasn't ready for you to come in person, but thanks again for all your help. So I'm going to sign off, and uh, we'll see you again soon.